me llamo Efe, crecí en Almería y me vine aquí muy joven para hacer universidad. Eh, estudié Derecho, eh, soy abogada, pero el mundo del hostel me atrajo y ahora me dedico a enseñar esto al mundo. Diez años casi. Mucho tiempo y me parece poco. My name is Adrien, I'm uh, 39, I arrived in Canada 10 years ago. Uh, basically because I was fed up with friends, so I just wanted to travel a little bit to change my mind. And before that I quit my job and all that. And uh, yeah, uh, it was just a trip, I didn't plan to stay here. Uh, just traveling and uh, well, the plan was to go back to France to find a new job, like, uh, but Granada happened, so that's it. <laughs> I fall in love with the city, here I am. <laughs> this is Silve, I'm 24 years old, I come from Schongau, from Oberbayern, from the south of Germany. I want to learn guitar and I went to Freiburg to do um, my practicum. To make. Weil es damals nicht leicht war, ein Praktikum zu finden, weil die meisten Gitarrenbauer einfach keine Praktikanten nehmen. Und der Gitarrenbauer meinte damals, wenn ich wirklich Gitarrenbau lernen will, also gut bauen will, dann sollte ich nach Kanada gehen. Und er meinte in der, im gleichen Zeitraum, dass er einen Gitarrenbauer kennt, der im Süden von Spanien lebt, eben in der Nähe von Kanada. Und der hat mir damals den Kontakt gegeben, der hat mir die Nummer gegeben. Und Dann war ich aber noch ein Jahr in Deutschland, weil ich in der Schreinerei gearbeitet habe. Und das Jahr drauf habe ich gesagt, ich ähm, gehe jetzt nach Kanada. Und hab dem, da habe ich damals direkt los Sachen gepackt, alles ins Auto geschmissen und bin losgefahren. Und bin dann aber dann auch direkt in Granada geblieben. Also auch wenn die Apokale ist eigentlich fast eine Stunde von hier. Und mir hat Granada so gut gefallen, dass ich halt dann immer gependelt bin. Also ich habe zwar in Alpuhalle gearbeitet, bin aber immer hier, hier geblieben dann immer. Und habe dann eben auch drei Monate im Hostel gewohnt. Dann habe ich im Sommer in Deutschland gearbeitet und bin dann wieder hierher gekommen im November. Genau, und seit November habe ich hier meine Wohnung. Und bin wieder im Gebau Gitarrenbau tätig. Yo me llamo Aurora. Como la Virgen de la Aurora aquí de Babaicín, pero, pero yo nací en Alemania y mi mamá era italiana y mi papá español y vivían en Alemania porque eran inmigrantes y nosotros estuvimos allí, ellos estuvieron 40 años y nosotras pues con 13 años, con, nos fuimos de, a, desde Alemania a Italia y con 13 años nos vinimos aquí a España y, y ya bueno pues estuve viviendo aquí, cuando ya me independicé con 16, 17 años empecé a a viajar, a trabajar afuera, en Bélgica, en Mallorca, en Tenerife, en Canarias, Canarias, estuve viajando y trabajando fuera. Y una de las veces que vine a Granada, conocí a mi marido gitano y ya me quedé aquí. Y llevo ya 27 años aquí. My name is Colin. I was born in Ireland and uh, my parents emigrated to Australia when I was very young, so I identify as an Australian. I grew up in a small town in Australia and then went to university and then ended up in an office in a suit for about 10, 12 years and then started working for myself and then started backpacking. It was either September 2009 or September 2010, but I think it's September 2009. I'd heard to come to southern Spain and I went to Malaga to the airport there and I was in Malaga for two nights and I was uh, staying at a hostel that wasn't very good. I didn't like Malaga, the beaches uh, were dirty and the vibe was just too intense and too party. So someone said go to Granada and I came to Granada and um, I chose yeah, El Granada Hostel. And I came back a year later, I think it was August 2010, so 2009, 2010. I was a volunteer for three and a half months. But after that I wasn't in Granada for a while, but then I just, because I was you know, traveling and living in different countries, I'd always come back to Granada and just visit, so at least 20 or 30 times. La primera vez que yo conecté en Granada fue con este, con este sitio y esta pista. 
fue aquí. Recuerdo ese atardecer, era mágico. Eh, esos tonos rojos, esos tonos violetas, una cervecita, un... me enamoré. Y hasta hoy. First of all, everybody told me to go to Granada before. So maybe I was prepared by some people unconsciously. Uh, this girl I met uh, before traveling to Granada, two days before, she was from Granada and she she always uh, she was always telling me Granada, that's a city for you. So I arrived in Granada. I was not ex expecting anything, but I knew well maybe that's uh, it's going to be an interesting city. Okay, I arrived. I left my stuff in a in a hostel. And I decided to go on my own because all my roommates were all French and drunk. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to feel Granada myself. And I went to the Sacramonte. And that's my first encounter, I mean, with the, like uh, my Granada. And uh, yeah, literally after two hours, I was like, hmm, hmm, there's something about this city. Like uh, maybe Elena was right, maybe all these people were right. But uh, I can feel something in this city, uh, and then that's uh, the story I told you. Like uh, I found this graffiti saying like uh, Grenoble, uh, my hometown, Granada. After two hours, and I was like, okay, that's it. That's a sign. I, I mean, so yeah, love at first sight, literally. Ich war ziemlich überrascht. Ich habe mich nicht informiert. Was gibt's in Granada? Warum kommen Leute hierher? Ich meine, hier gibt's ja auch einen Haufen Tourismus, allein wegen der Alhambra, also allein die Stadt selber. Ich habe mich nur informiert, ich bin damals wegen dem Tipp, dass es hier Gitarrenbau gibt. Hier gibt es die meisten Gitarrenbauer auf der Welt und die besten auf der Welt, weil der Gitarrenbau hier auch entstanden ist. Und das war der Grund, warum ich hierher gekommen bin. Ich habe keine Ahnung gehabt, warum, also, äh, dass Granada so ist. <lacht> viele Gefühle. Es gibt viele Gefühle, die die Stadt auslöst. Es fühlt sich an, wenn man nach Granada kommt, fühlt sich ein bisschen wie Heimkommen an. Horrible, la odiaba, odiaba España, odiaba Granada, porque además cuando yo vine a España venía de vivir en Alemania, que todo era muy bonito, muy limpio, muy verde, de vivir en Italia, en el norte de Italia, también en el campo vivía en Verona, que es una ciudad muy bonita, y cuando llegamos a España esto seguía siendo la época después de Franco, que estaba todo muy un poco abandonado, sucio, la gente era muy inculta, Granada era pequeña. Eh, a mí no me gustaba Granada y además yo no hablaba español y me sentía muy incómoda. En el colegio me trataban mal, se reían de mí, me decían que yo era la extranjera con mamá. Mi mamá estuvo 40 años aquí en España y se murió siendo María la, la italiana, o sea, la extranjera. Y nosotras éramos las hijas de la italiana, ¿sabes? O sea que al principio odiaba España, pero después me fui acostumbrando y después ya empecé a viajar y... Bueno, aprendí el idioma y después ya me enamoré y ya me gusta mucho, yo sí me gusta, pero tardé unos años, odiaba España, no me gustaba nada. I loved it immediately. When you travel a lot, you feel the energy of a place even before you arrive, like the people on the bus, the, the nature changes, and then you arrive at the bus station and it's a little bit far out in Granada, but you just start feeling the energy of the place straight away. It was so different to Malaga, which was probably helped. That kind of helped as well, because the Malaga experience wasn't particularly good. And then I just started seeing the, um, the different influences and the, um, the Moorish influence, the Alhambra. I just, but for me, immediately it was the energy. It's happened in other places, um, but Granada is a special place. It's just, there's just this energy of sort of understated importance. It's not like Paris, where you arrive and you see everything that you've seen on postcards or on the TV. I would just say it just felt, it just felt good, really good. Mm -hmm. I felt it was very tolerant, everything was accepted. De Granada me gusta su gente. Me gusta que cada esquina eh, tiene arte. Me gusta los hippies, me gusta los bohemios. Las flores, el campo, la playa, lo tiene todo. Es una ciudad pequeña. The fact uh, that uh, we are in a city, but we can be in a countryside like easily, like just walking. My nature is nearby. That's really important, uh, and I can escape sometimes. You know, like if I just want to walk on my own, like uh, I can do that uh, easily. Like just 
leaving my house and in 20 mm. minutes uh, that's it and then the graffiti scene it, the mix of culture architecture like uh, landscape like uh, everything uh, is in the mix in granada you know like uh, you're going to be in san nicolas you're going to see the snow the sun the, the the palm trees in one frame you know so maybe that's uh, the thing who i like about granada that's the thing i i that's the reason why i fall in love with the city but then you dig a little bit and it's not that nice and not that beautiful so now you know after 10 years maybe i it's uh, it's a little bit different but uh, yeah that's that was it uh, first uh, at least es ist überall gute straßenmusik und auch in den bars oder so es gibt viel live musik und immer gutes wetter es ist es gibt keinen übergang zwischen frühling oder herbst es gibt einfach nur Sommer, 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 Winter, Sommer, 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 Sommer. <lacht> also im Winter wird es dann schon auch kalt in der Nacht, aber es gibt auch Tage mit 20 Grad am Tag. So. Und dann geht es halt wieder auf 1 Grad runter manchmal. <lacht> Man spürt die Kultur, es gibt viel arabischen Einfluss, es gibt überall gute Falafel. Das Ding ist, ich bin auch kein Stadtmensch eigentlich. Ich mag große Städte nicht. Ich mag keine Orte, wo viele Menschen auf einem Punkt sind. So. Und hier gehst du halt zehn Minuten und du bist in der Natur einfach, also man sieht es ja jetzt hier, so hier ist San Miguel Alto, hier Alhambra, hier die Stadt, aber wir sind hier in der Natur einfach, wir sind aber in Granada, also wir sind noch in einer Stadt quasi. San Miguel Alto, pero esto me gusta porque forma parte de la ciudad, pero está fuera y está aquí hay libertad, aquí se respira, por lo menos yo Respiro lo que sienten los gitanos, respeto su sitio, su, 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 su casa que le protege y además siento, siento el espíritu de la libertad y el espíritu gitano de mi marido y mi casa. Almost whatever you want to be, you can be here, and I don't mean it from a tolerance point of view. I mean it from if you want to have tapas every day and drink every day and go a little bit crazy and you know there, there's so many different subcultures in Granada you can be a party animal and that's one end of the spectrum um, and everything that that is involved in being a party animal but at the other end of the spectrum if you want to focus on yourself um, and get a lot of quiet time and um, have access to the beach and visit nature and do your yoga and be mindful and be present there's also that and everything in between I appreciate that probably the only thing that I'm aware of that's missing is is the really high corporate, I don't have that feel that there's many people here that are in that, you know, corporate suit, like go, 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 like Sydney, New York, Tokyo, London vibes. You can be whatever you want to be. And um, I think during my visits and living in Granada, I've kind of evolved through some of those stages. Lo que le hace diferente que Granada tiene magia, es, es la vibra que tiene, es, no sabría cómo explicarlo, creo que tienes que venir para poder saberlo, ¿sabes? para conocerlo tienes que venir. Y sobre todo la vida es lenta, no hay, no hay prisa, eh, todo como mucho más relajado, la gente aquí viene para vivir no para trabajar. Lo que más me gusta hacer en Granada es caminar. Lo adoro. O sea, recuerdo pandemia y pasarla aquí fue un regalo. Fue un verdadero regalo. O sea, ver a Alhambra sola, sin gente, o sea, sus calles, ese, ese silencio. Caminar, sin duda sería caminar. O sea, no me canso de caminar en Granada. Si tengo algún problema, un día me ha ido mal, me doy un paseo por el Darro, me doy un paseo por el por Alhambra y se me quita todo. Die Leute, Leute von überall kommen hier, also viele Leute kommen und gehen und kommen wieder. Es gibt ja auch den Spruch, entweder du bleibst oder du kommst wieder. Und das ist auch wahr, also damals, als ich 2020 hier war, habe ich so viele coole Leute kennengelernt, so viele tolle Menschen und ich glaube, die Hälfte von denen habe ich einfach ein Jahr später hier wieder getroffen. Auch wenn die selber, die meisten von denen sind heimgegangen. Ja waren in der Zwischenzeit auch nicht in Granada und viele sind geblieben und viele sind einfach wiedergekommen. Also gute Freunde kennengelernt, von überall einfach. 
was ich nicht so schön finde, ist dieser stetige Wechsel an Menschen. Man lernt immer schöne Leute kennen, also tolle Menschen und ähm, ähm, das Problem ist, die kommen und gehen. Du triffst Menschen, du lernst sie lieben und in zwei, drei Monaten hauen die wieder ab. Weil es so ein schöner Ort ist, es fühlt sich an wie Heimkommen, aber wenn man dann wiederkommt, sind vielleicht nicht die gleichen Leute wieder da. Viele Leute sind einfach in einem anderen Land oder halt zu Hause. Aber dann halt doch das Schöne, dass du halt doch viele von den Leuten wieder triffst. Ja. Und es ist nicht einfach, Arbeit zu finden. Und wenn man Arbeit findet, dann wird sie nicht gut bezahlt. Also The Granada Trap, it's just like uh, you walk and you suddenly you discover Granada, uh, poof, you fall in the trap, you enjoy when you're falling, you know. But every time you think uh, you might touch uh, the, the, the bottom because you need to, you arrive at the end of a cycle or whatever and you need to, to go back up to, to escape this trap, nah, there's no way. <laughs> That's uh, the problem, so you know what you have in Granada, you know what you lose. Uh, if you leave Granada, I got so many friends who, who love Granada just like me, but for some reason they had to, to leave and they do miss Granada a lot. And that's uh, the reason why I'm still here because I got so many friends missing Granada so much. So, and they tell me, you have to stay here, like don't leave, nah, 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 nah. So, so I know so many people, they've been saying that forever, like I'm gonna leave Granada, I'm fed up, I'm gonna leave Granada, I'm fed up. I say that sometimes as well. So it's part of the trap, sadly. Mm. But then when you're really fed up, you're gonna say that, and then you think a minimum, and you're like, hmm, I'm in a common, it's sunny, uh, life is cheap compared to France. And that's it, that's the thing, uh, especially when I think about France, I'm like, oh no, I'm still good here. There isn't a Granada that I'm aware of in the world. My understanding is that Granada is one of the few places in the world um, before things went a bit awry that the, um, the Catholics and the Jews and the Muslims lived together without um, any issues for many hundreds of years. And that was during the, um, the Muslim dynasty. And I believe that there's only a couple of other cities in the world, one of them being Damascus, which obviously things aren't so well these days. And maybe that is part of the tolerance feel that I felt. It's just. No one cares whether you're what you're wearing or what color you are or um, whether your hair is long or dreadlocks or you know tattoos or it's just a very accepting place. But the no is I feel like there's a bit of a Granada in a lot of countries in the world. And when I go visit Austria, uh, there's a place called Graz. It's completely different to Granada, but it's also a university city. There's also graffiti. There's also this energy and vibe. Uh, there's also botions or the street parties and stuff, a little bit informal. And then uh, in Italy, for example, it's Bologna for me. But they're all very different cities, but there's this core energy um, in them. So that's the yes and the no. I feel historically maybe Granada now is quite special because of the, just the tolerance and the, um, the feeling of being here. But yeah, I feel like there is a, a special place in each country that I identify with in my travels. Yes, it's very different because Granada has a lot of encanto. But you know why it has encanto? Because aunque yo pueda, me puedan decir a mí, yo no soy gitana, ¿no? Pero me pueden decir gitana de mierda, o yo me puedo decir negro de mierda, o tal, o moro de mierda, ¿no? Pero aquí, en el fondo, todos convivimos, todos nos llevamos bien. Y el que venga a Granada es bienvenido. Luego cada uno a su suerte, ¿no? Como tú te comportes, así recibirás eh, respeto o no. Pero Granada acoge a la gente. Pero sobre todo para la gente que viene de fuera se siente como en casa. Vosotros podéis decirlo. No, al final se siente como, estoy cómodo aquí. Estoy, te acoge, la nada te acoge. Aparte que es bonita, una ciudad muy bonita. Muy agresiva, una ciudad tranquila. Y además hay mucha marcha, aquí lo he pasado muy bien, ¿no? Es muy bonito de nada. Si tuviera que decir algo es que Granada te alegra el alma. Así que invito a todo el mundo a que venga a que se dé un paseo y que y que conecte consigo mismo. Mm, well, it's a city you have to visit, uh, you have to know, obviously, and I'm not saying that because I'm working in the tourism. But uh, <laughs> and that's something obviously when you are tourist you don't realize, but uh, a lot of people just like me 10 years ago when I discovered Granada for the first time, they see just the surface. 
So it's beautiful, the tapas are so cheap, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, uh, there's a lot of tourism, so it should be all right. But uh, when you dig a little bit, uh, the reality is not that uh, beautiful in Granada. So it's hard to ask and tell uh, tourists to see that because that's not what you see when you're a tourist, obviously. But uh, that's why a lot of people, they have the, this uh, mistaken view of Granada in the sense that uh, they have a, they had a nice experience and all that. But for the people living, it's another story. And that's why there's so many people, they need to to leave the city because there's no job here. Like uh, when they have a job, it's the, 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 the money is really bad. So that's what I would say, tell the to the people, like being more responsible in the their way to travel, you know, like... Uh, uh, trying to think about a little bit more about what the thing they ha they, they're going to see. If people could see that as well in Granada, that would be nice because that's the curse of the city. This mass tourism now and people, they enjoy it and the more people are coming, more people are coming. But in the end, Granada is getting destroyed by the, the inside, you know, like a, and at long term, it's not going to last. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that would be important for the people to acknowledge, uh, acknowledge that because I still love Granada and I don't want to leave. So just trying to see Granada, the big picture, mm -hmm. that's important when you travel. Yo siempre, siempre lo digo, lo habéis escuchado vosotros, tenés cuidado en Granada, porque si viene, te enamora. O te enamora de la ciudad o te enamora de alguien, pero te enamora. Y al final, te atrapa, te atrapa. <laughs> Es que es así y yo lo puedo confirmar. Al final hay algo que hace que, que vuelva, hay algo que necesita estar enganada. Te atrapa, lo sabes. Por eso. To really connect with Granada is to have a few days here. Uh, some people are very tight travel plans, so you, you can't, you know, it's, it is it is as it is. But I feel it's um, I use the word criminal to give Granada 24 hours. I think it's definitely worth. Um, three days in almost any travel plans that someone has and if you spend a week here um, it'll get you, it'll grab you, it'll, it'll be a place that you'll always come back to or you'll always think about.